on a scale of one to ten, the kind of funny scale, how excited are we for this Xbox showcase? Andy Cortez. Uh I I've had a lot better luck just saying that I'm not ex not expecting much and hopefully getting kind of wowed by what the announcements could possibly be. I'm gonna go ahead and throw I'll say a 6.5. Whoa! Oh, that's what we said for Summer Game Fest. That's so I'll put a 6.5. Yeah. Greg Miller. You know, these words have never haunted me, Tim. <laughs> There's no way this can be bad. That's yes, <laughs> All right. Yes. I am a 9 out of 10. I am ready. And again, I'll, you know, they have me with, hey, we're going to talk about Shattered Space. Hey, let's talk about this Fallout 76 expansion. Good, good. That's I'm, you know what I mean? Two games that I've been playing for a month yep. now, just nonstop, back and forth. Can't wait. Love it, love it, love it, love it. You throw in, <laughs> let's just say State of the K3 like happens. Nine out of, nine out of ten, a Fallout 76 expansion <laughs> and a Starfield He's expansion. Right now. He loves nine those out games. of ten. Hey, loves listen, I understand all you over there with your monocles and your ivory <laughs> towers don't want to get down here in the mud with me and the other Xbox biggies, all right? <laughs> but we're in here, we're rolling in Todd Howard's filth, and we're having a great time, all right? I don't get mad when you go play Genshin, all right? When you're excited for the new Street Fighter <laughs> shirt like to come more, in. Uh, gotcha. successful than Fallout 76. Oh, yeah, a thousand percent. Yeah, no, 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 don't worry. <laughs> Just imagine it like this way. What if Avengers was still going and was getting its own press conference? Here I am, everybody. <laughs> I don't give a shit. I'm having a great time. 10 out of 10. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but like, then you want to dream a bit, right? Of like, okay, what if it was something crazy like State of the K3? What if it was, hey, something, you're crazy. Something crazy. Yeah. Something crazy. Yeah. Something crazy. Hey, just so everybody knows, <laughs> State of Decay 3 <laughs> has the makings of a great game. No. It listen, is right I'm not there. A hater of State of oh, my God. State of Decay 2 is good. It's just missing a couple of pieces that would have made that a great game that people would go wild for and to, you would it, love. It's good, but I don't understand the sentence, uh, something crazy like State of Decay 3. So, that, stay, so stick with me, Gr uh, Grub. Talk to me about it because my – answer that question in the explanation of something crazy is I think State of Decay 3 is kind of fucked, right? Where it was like, oh, okay, here's the sure. teaser trailer for it everybody years ago, and then guess what? Everyone's left the fucking studio, and no one knows what's happening with it. And to, I, I don't expect State of Decay 3 to be there, and I kind of wouldn't be shocked if it never happened. So for okay. me to be so crazy in the ever wild bucket. All right. I yeah, exactly. Yeah. For it to be, it would be crazy. I feel if I'm totally wrong and they're like, here's a playable and it's out this summer or it's out in the fall or, you know, whatever. I just, I don't see that happening. Right? Rumors are there's zombies kind of like walking in undead labs right now. <laughs> it's the same way for me. I think the fable thing is crazy because I just don't think they're ready to have a deep dive. Let's show you blah, blah, blah. Where are we at with that? I want to see that. I hope that happens. Yada, yada, yada. So again, for the two things I care the most about from Xbox. Awesome. You got them right over there. Look at that fucking sexy Indiana Jones. Are you kidding me? I want to see that game. I'm going to get that. I'm going to be excited to see about that. You want to throw in the fucking rumor that there's an Xbox handheld? You talking about bringing a console on the go with you, Mikey? This is Greg Miller's year of Xbox. Uh, <laughs> Mike, how you feel? Now. What's your hype level? Uh, I'm actually at an 8 out of 10 right there. I know uh, a fair amount of things that I've been tracking throughout the years doing XCast with Paris. So that I'm expecting about 14 items for this Woo. year alone that we've been tracking. And then beyond into 2025, yeah. Yeah. I have a number of things. But the possible rumor of an Xbox handheld and then a maybe shadow dropped video game. Uh, I'm pretty jazzed up, but I'm going to be a solid 8 out of 10 with room for them to wow me and room for them to disappoint me. You want to talk about, are we going on the bulleted list? Because no, I'm we're, excited. No, we're going, going down with yeah. We're going down yeah. Blessing, what are you giving it? I'm, I'm similar to Andy. I think I'm probably at a 6. Not that I don't think it's going to be a great showcase, but I think it's Paris, more... these kids are crazy. Let's start Xbox you and it's, me. It's <laughs> and I'm <laughs> but like, my thing is, like, what is, what is Xbox? I, I, they've not really teased that much that I'm like... Oh, I can't fucking wait to see Bro, Call cars in Starfield. You're <laughs> kidding me right I can't now? wait for the Call of Duty Direct. You know, like, I think, honestly, I think the Call of Duty Direct is what would take it from, like, a 7 down to a 6 for me, where Fair. it's not a Starfield Direct, right? It's not an Indiana Jones Direct. It's not even an Avowed Direct. I, I'll i play Call of Duty when a Black Ops comes out, and I'll, I'll enjoy it for what it is, right? But, like, that is your star player here. That is the thing that you're like, hey, you know, we're going to do our showcase, but then tune in for, I forget how long they say, let's say 30 minutes with Call of Duty Deep Dive. I think that's exciting for a group of people, but for like speaking to your core audience, the people that are there for the Banjos of the world or for the Indiana Jones or for the Halos or for like these games that you associate with Xbox to go, we're going to take the most common denominator. That's like doing like a FIFA showcase where yeah, but, it's like, I don't, uh, cool. All right, cool. You're speaking to a mainstream audience. But you're doing a whole direct on this thing. All right, cool. I get why they're doing it. I get that they had to they had to to make Call of Duty feel like an Xbox thing. I understand completely the marketing side of it. I just think for me as a player, I'm just like, 
all right, cool. I'm going to be sitting here for 30 minutes being like, yeah, gun shoot good. Sound good too. <laughs> yeah, but like COD is like one of the biggest games on planet Earth, right? So like, to I have mean, so that... is Genshin Impact. And like, here if they did a Genshin go. Impact showcase after this, you'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> I mean, they, they have a big win with Call of Duty. And to have that, I mean, it's not going to really love here on this table, but like for the larger audience, I think they're going to go wild for. 30 minutes of Call of Duty Black Op action brought to you by Xbox. That's a pretty big win in the general public's eyes. I, I, I disagree. I don't think the general public watches this. I think the hardcore gaming audience watches these like directs and these videos, but the Call of Duty is going to sell a million billion copies regardless of whatever they show, yeah. whether it has a big a big time here. I think I, I, I understand where Bless is coming from because I for me, it's like the known quantities don't really excite me. And if they happened to pull out a, a random kind of gameplay trailer for Perfect Dark. I'm still not super stoked about Perfect Dark. I'm not super stoked about, um, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for Avowed and, um, let's see, Clockwork Revolution and even possibly uh, Outer Worlds 2. Those are maybe the three IP that I'm, like, pretty excited about. But when we talk about, like, their heavy hitters... I just don't really care a whole lot about Perfect Dark. Even I know it's like in a really, really bad state right now. I don't know if like I doubt we see any Perfect Dark here at all. But whatever they have cooking right there, it's not like I'm kind of like soup itching to see more of whatever that is. And that's my thing is I, I am more excited for a Perfect Dark. It comes out of taste, you know. I, I, and I, it does come down to taste. I think with Call of Duty thing, Andy kind of hits it with like the known quantity aspect of it. Where whether or not it would have been an Xbox Direct, we would have gotten the Call of Duty breakdown, right? There's always there's usually every year a Call of Duty event, especially for a Black Ops year. We would have had that in um, August. And so like to get this as part of the Xbox showcase, I'm just like, cool, this is what we would have gotten anyway. So it's not as exciting for me. Um, I would have preferred, yeah, like a perfect dark thing. I know it's probably not ready or an Indiana Jones thing or something that is more, um, I guess aimed at like the hardcore gamer crowd. But yeah, like, I mean, I'm, I'm, I think I am also like lowering my expectations. So that way I can be wild. I am looking forward to them lift, like hitting me with surprises to then lift that hype for Same. me. This episode of Kinda of Funny is brought to you by Punkle, the developers behind Vampire Survivors. Did you know that Vampire Survivors is out on just about everything? That's right, you can play it this very second on PC, Xbox, Switch, and mobile. And if that wasn't enough, it's coming to PlayStation this summer with a platinum trophy, and I just so happen to be stoked. Why? Because it's awesome! Vampire Survivors is a gothic horror casual game with roguelike elements where your choices can allow you to quickly snowball against the hundreds of monsters that get thrown at you. Mow down thousands of night creatures and survive until dawn. Pick your character, spend your gold on power-ups, and get to being the bullet hell in the game that features absolutely zero vampires. Ponkel even just released the new DLC Operation Guns featuring the classic and timeless Konami IP Contra. We've been talking about this game for years, so there's no reason not to support it. Now, it's as affordable as a cup of coffee. Get Vampire Survivors on your platform of choice this very second and thank Ponkel for sponsoring Kinda Funny. I, I'm at a 7-5 with this, but I could almost argue an 8. And I, and I feel like maybe at the end of the day and after this conversation, I feel like talking to these, to these beautiful gentlemen here, I might end at that 8. And I think that when it comes to the Call of Duty thing, I'm kind of in between Blessing and Andy and, and Mike, where I... Feel like them choosing to put Call of Duty here is a statement, and I want them. I think that they're trying to have the brand association, obviously, but I want to see them step up Call of Duty and to wow us to, as much as they can. I know that that's a very, very, very tough sell, and I don't think that it's necessarily going to happen. But I think them positioning it the way that they are, I feel like they are more confident in this than oh, it's just another Call of Duty. Even though I know the irony of it being it's Call of Duty Black Ops Six, it's like this is a known quantity, but. It's Xbox now. That could mean something different. I'm excited they're positioning it here. I'm hopeful. Not expecting, but hopeful for that. And for me, I'm high on this because a lot of known quantities, we know a lot of the games that they're working on already. There's a lot of questions I want answered on dates for things, on the status of some things, and there's so much room for announcements of what teams are working on. Uh, but coming down this list as I was making it, I was telling Greg, I'm like, Coming up with a list of the PlayStation, it's like, all right, cool. There's a handful of things to talk about. There's, there's a whole bunch of third-party uh, shit to talk about might, that potentially would be there. 
going down Xbox's showcase. My God, there's like a hundred things that are like, oh yeah, it would totally make sense for that thing to be there. Um, am I personally very excited about most of those things? No, but I know a lot of people are. So, um, and Xbox, I feel like in the last couple of years has put together really great showcases in terms of them being entertaining and fun. Um, and I thought last year's was great. So if we get some follow up to that and that level, um, just with added answers to the questions, maybe some fun announcements that I'm actually expecting. I feel like, yeah, I've, I've won over my eight. Paris, what about you? So I'm wearing this X cash shirt for a reason. Number, number one, because of, of all you jabronis, as Mike would call you and your weak predictions that you're having right now about expectations. So blessing is lowering his expectations. I'm raising mine. We're at a 9.5. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my God. And here's why, here's why being, being serious for a second. Here's why obviously just 2024, all these rumors, the speculation, business updates, doom and gloom, just everything that's been going on with Xbox in, in the first half of this year. This is honestly their first opportunity to control the message. This is their first opportunity to be proactive about what they want the community, the gaming world as a whole to know what direction Xbox is headed. Activision has been fully acquired. They're being integrated now. Bethesda has obviously been around for a few years. They're at 30 plus studios at this point. When you go down the list of games that they potentially could show at this showcase, the the, the options are, are damn near endless of what they could show us. They don't even have to show South of Midnight Fable or anything. They could lean into Gears. They can lean into Perfect Dark. They can lean into unannounced things. Obviously, Fallout's a big thing for them right now. There's so many things that they can do. Then you talk about the services that they have. What, what is the future of Game Pass, right? What is the future of cloud? I mean, there's the potential that they could integrate not just Game Pass games into cloud streaming, all Xbox games in, into cloud streaming, as an example, right? When you talk about this from a hardware perspective, clearly, Phil has just been hinting all over the place about this handheld, and it seems like we're going to hear something about that. We know we're going to get an all digital series x most likely at the showcase as well this is their time if they through all the oh they're not selling hardware they're not doing this what does xbox need to do to have a win this is their opportunity to have that win this is their opportunity to flex their their muscle of xbox game studios and all the the ip that they have right now show us what the future of hardware potentially could be for them show us what the future of services could be for them so you got damn right i'm going into this excited because it should be it, it should be a 9 9.5 10 showcase because they've been eerily quiet this year or you know in recent times that's that's not normal for them no, you, normally you see aaron greenberg tweeting every five minutes about the showcase and time length and this that and the other i almost feel like let's be quiet and let the showcase speak for itself. We don't need to speak for the showcase. So, yeah, I'm going in at a 9.5. I would say the quietness is probably because of the layoffs and <clears throat> bad news. Well, recently. yes, that, but, but that is. goes but that goes into, into to part of what I'm, I'm saying. It's been so there's been so much bad news surrounding Xbox the, uh, the first half of this year. If they're ever going to have an opportunity so that to have people view the brand, view the future of what they're doing in positive light, this is the start of it. And I don't think it's just the showcase either. I think the fact that Phil's going on with Ryan McCaffrey right after, that's their opportunity to answer some of the hard questions that they're clearly not going to address in a showcase as well. So this is the time, if, if, if ever. If they can't do it at this showcase, then when? That's my 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 uh, take Can on. We not, I feel like we ask that question every year, though, right? Like, this is this was different, though, blessing, because mm -hmm. I had even tweeted that, and of course, that was the first thing people immediately said to me. I think this one is know. different because they've clearly changed business strategy. It's it's apparent. So tell us, tell us clear cut what is that business strategy going to be so people can set expectations is it going to be that now bethesda and activision games are going to be multi-platform okay tell us that is there going to be select titles after a period of time that are going to go to other platforms tell us that what is this handheld going to be is it going to be this hybrid device is it going to be uh layered on top of windows you can integrate steam and the epic store and all these things into it this is their time to tell us good bad or indifferent what their strategy is going to be and then obviously as a community we you know we can go from there grub i'm 
Yeah, I, I'm I'm at an eight out of ten. It'll a lot of it will come down to to uh, execution. Uh, I think it really helps to a showcase if there's surprises that just come come out of completely nowhere. That's what I think of when I think of a showcase. I think of those you know PlayStation uh, showcases of dreams at, at E3, where you know they just one after another big surprise that helps you get to a ten out of ten. That'll be difficult because Microsoft has so many uh, like games already announced that they need to tell us about. So they're operating from a point of disadvantage. But eight out of ten, and if they, if all the games look really good, I'll I'll move my uh, my ranking up to like a nine. Uh, that that could easily happen. I will say I'll I'll, I'll set some stuff like you know I'm not gonna spoil anything, but the numbers I'm hearing is about two hours in about thirty games, uh, and uh, at least a handful of those are games that we've never heard of before. So it's like okay, that's a good place to start, and that's kind of like. You know, if all those games hit really hard, I am could easily make that eight. And then that's where I expect if they nail the execution, we'll get up to that nine out of ten.